In your statements uh, that you published after you resigned from Sinn Féin, you said that it was psychological warfare, that that's what you were subjected to. That's quite a big accusation to make. So what exactly are you basing that on? Yeah, well, I suppose the reason why I, I really left was because um, of the interactions that I was having with the organisation and the administration of the party. So, for example, like we have structures within the local end of the party um, and we didn't, like Claire was missing the main structure, which is called the Kovorla Cantor. And this was something that they said that they would look into setting up and it's, uh, I suppose, very important for communication and for collaboration within the local end of the party for raising issues from each area. And excuses were constantly coming up as to why that uh, significant structure was not in place. Um, but within time, you could see that, you know, none of those excuses were really holding up. And you felt this was deliberate? I do, yeah. Um, you know, I would have felt that there was issues there um, with, let's say, people who would have prominent positions. Um, and whenever I would, you know, meet with them, I'd be told that there is no issues whatsoever. But then, you know, in Zoom meetings, for example, then, you know, if they thought I wasn't there, um, they had an awful lot to say about myself or um, the setup of my office, for example. I suppose I, I caught it in, in action at one of those Zoom meetings where, um, you know, I remember I did, thought that I wasn't present in the meeting and it really, I suppose, came through. I suppose that it was a personal attack rather than just, you know, these are, are things that we think that are important. I'm told that five to six peak parliamentary questions were, were apt, which obviously they are not. Um, and, you know, if, if I wanted information or research to be done, you know, Google was, was a great way to, to get that information. So, you know, it did become obvious that even collaboration from staff members was becoming an issue as well. It was also in actions that were taken, like, for example, you know, commemorations were done online um, because of COVID. I, I had difficulties even getting access to membership lists, you know, just so as that I could be in contact with the members. Um, so I very much felt like as if I was being prevented in, in every way from being the TD but also from being part of the party. And you also felt that other things were dictated to you, including staff, for example. Oh, yes. That was um, probably the most difficult situation that I had ever experienced with the party. And it wasn't something that I had ever foreseen. Uh, Sinn Féin handled, I suppose, the advertisement, which was, was great. It was a great help, especially to a new TD, um, to get in, in what I seen it as support. But it ended up being a method of control, as far as I could see. We felt that there was um, a major agenda there of, of getting control, um, uh, of getting control control over, I suppose, my work and, and myself. I mean, in, in the end, it became very difficult to even, I suppose, give direction. You know, it, 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 I suppose that did affect me. So, um, so when I spoke about psychological warfare, it, it very much so was. I mean, I was left um, an awful lot of the time wondering, you know, why am I hearing something different now? So Any understanding of why? No, I've, I've made quite a lot of assumptions, <laughs> I suppose, based on everyone's behaviour. Um, and what are those assumptions? That it was personal, anyway, that's 100%. Um, I mean, I think that I wasn't somebody who could be easily controlled, maybe, would be the, uh, another way uh, to explain it, because, uh, you know, there was various points where I didn't do what I was told, or I didn't fall into line, I suppose. Um, so I know that that was an issue uh, that had been mentioned before. Um, and uh, instead of, I suppose, having, you know, adult conversations, uh, there was a bit of name calling that um, went along with that, you know. Um, calling you names? Oh, yes. Like what? Um, it, you know, just saying that I was um, mad in the head altogether. How is this making you feel, Violet Ann? Well, isolated was one thing. Um, and I had voiced that. It's not a case of, you know, that I was sitting in, in the corner and not saying anything. You know, there, basically, I suppose I was being led to believe that what I was seeing and what I was feeling was very much my own perspective and it wasn't something that, um, that was their experience. Um, but then when you're not able to get, uh, I suppose, collaboration and information, I suppose, then you, you are left wondering, well, what's going on here? Could it just be, Violet on a clash of personalities? I don't think so. Um, I definitely don't believe so. I mean, 
I, I've worked well with, with others all of my life. Um, I was a member of the Reserve Defence Forces for a number of years. I've never had issues like this in any other aspect of my life. Um, I can honestly say that. Um, you know, so I, I can't see when they mention difficulties, I don't know exactly what they're referring to um, in speaking about myself. And I think, you know, there obviously is an agenda there on their behalf to, to I suppose, point uh, people's thoughts in the direction of myself. There must be something wrong with her as an individual or, or something to that effect. Um, and, you know, it has, it has left me feeling like I should defend myself or I need to defend myself in some way to almost prove that that isn't the case. Um, but, but you didn't, you feel you didn't contribute to this? I can't see how. I mean, I'm a very open person um, and I'm very, like, honest as well. And I, I've, I've sought meetings with the right people. I've done what I could from my end mm. to try and, I suppose, make things more positive. And Sinn Féin, for their part, Violet Ann, uh, in a statement, said that they wish you well, that there were issues within the constituency and they were working through these and hoping to work through them further when you returned from your maternity leave. Do you accept this? I had seen that, yeah. and. Um, I suppose you could say that, you know, there was meetings being held and that there was the right conversations uh, with myself being had. Um, but as for action, there, there was none because it was quite concerning. And as I was explaining to the party, you know, forget it about it being about myself for a moment. Uh, what about anybody else coming into the party? Um, are, are they going to have the same experience? Is this something that is quite normalised within um, the party that you know issues can just be there and not be addressed and not, um, uh, I, yeah, just not be addressed? I suppose. And what was said to you about becoming pregnant with your child? Yeah. Um, so I had, I suppose, you know, informed um, a number of people, and you know, most of them conversations had gone reasonably well. Uh, I was quite nervous actually at um, informing the party uh, because I suppose all of the difficulties that I felt I was experiencing up until that point, you know, I, I just, I was concerned at what the reaction was going to be. Uh, I was met with, well, I had a member come into the office and when they were leaving, I, you know, just pulled them aside and said, um, just to let you know that I'm actually pregnant. And they responded that you're an effing idiot. And, I even, you know, reacted straight away because she reiterated it again, you're an Ephenesia. And I was like, okay, thanks. And that was the end of the conversation she had left. So yeah, I was just really taken aback by that. that do you reaction. still believe in the party? Do you still believe in Sinn Féin? Do you think they are a suitable party for government? No. I had for so long believed in the party um, and I would constantly put a positive spin on uh, the difficulties I was having. I can't say that my treatment is something that I would want for anybody else. Um, and I know that, you know, it, there, are, there, are, there are issues with, I suppose, control would be the first thing, um, which is not good because, you know, when you have your own mind and you want to, I suppose, have your own opinions on things, um, you don't want to feel like you're, you're, you're being restricted. Um, and, and that's very much the feeling, I suppose, within the party. You also said in that statement, uh, Violet Ann, that you had baggage and that you brought that baggage to the attention of the party. What is that baggage? What are you referring to? Um, well, I suppose it, it came out very, very quickly after me being elected. So I had issues with um, the housing uh, organisation that I had moved to County Clare with. Um, so I knew that there was going to be, I suppose, media coverage on that. And I, you know, that had been relayed to the party as well, to the head of the organisation. So, you know, it, I had been as transparent as I could be. So I, I, I can't see how... Um, you know, that the party would have seen it negatively after me getting elected when they hadn't prior to me being elected. I mean, it was common knowledge, even if I hadn't have been transparent, but I was. Um, and then also because of um, my partner who uses medicinal cannabis for his um, epilepsy. So, um, I mean, I suppose that in itself, I suppose, is, is um, not the norm.